I'm on my way to pick up my brand new touring vehicle for Australia. And I want to know, have I nailed it or have I absolutely sh the bed? Let's find out. Last year, guys, we built the ultimate Aussie Ram, shipped it over to America and spent five, six months doing a full lap, 30,000 kilometers of some of America's toughest terrain. So after living out of a 79 series for the previous years before that, to say I was skeptical coming over the Ram platform was an understatement. I wasn't sure if it was gonna have the reliability that the mighty 79 did. Now after doing 30,000 kilometers around America, here's some things that I absolutely loved about the Ram. Number one, guys, has to be comfort. The amount of kilometers we laid in that thing was absolutely insane, but I did it with ease. Massive interior, creature comforts that the Land Cruiser just didn't quite have. I also loved the load capacity. I was able to have my dream canopy on the back. We literally took everything plus the kitchen sink. So worrying about weight wasn't as big an issue as on the 79 series Land Cruiser. However, things I missed from the 79 series Land Cruiser. One, you gotta love that V8 note. That's nothing practical, but everyone loves a good V8 thong slap. Two, the reliability of the Land Cruiser. I know that truck inside and out. I know what it can do, I know what it can handle. I know that if something does break remote, I can get parts in the middle of nowhere, which is something you cannot do with the Ram. So this kind of leaves me a little bit torn. Which platform and which direction should I go? Now, it's no secret that I did fall in love with that Ram. So the big question is, why not just ship it back? Couple of reasons. You're up for about another $15,000 uh, in transport fees. You're up for somewhere between forty dollars to $60,000 in converting it to right-hand drive. So the costs, unfortunately, don't make it practical to bring back. So that vehicle, for any American viewers watching, it is gonna be for sale. It might not be up for sale yet, but it is for sale. We're gonna leave that vehicle over there. We may do one or two quick trips, but if someone wants the vehicle, it is up for grabs. So you're probably wondering, what's wrong with this truck? Why don't you build this truck out? Unfortunately, as much as I absolutely froth the Rebel, this vehicle is just not the correct platform to do the full touring setup. The 1500s just don't have the GVM that the other vehicles do, which leaves me with a little bit of a predicament. I need a full-time Australian touring vehicle. We got some massive trips planned this year. Yep, we're gonna be heading back up north. We're gonna be towing a lot of different things this year. I won't let too much out of the bag yet, but we will be towing about three different styles of trailers as well, guys. So I need the GVM and I need the tow capacity. I've been looking outside the box. I've been trying to find a different platform. I really wanted to do something that hasn't been done. Uh, the dual cab Rams, 2500s, 35s have been done. The 79s are done to death. 200s, 300s, 76s, troopies, you name it. They've all been done to death. I really wanted to try and build something with just this much point of difference. Not an easy task, but come with me because I think I found something. There's only a handful of these in the country. Let's go have a look. I think the signs in the background give it away. I have decided to go on another American platform. I back down with the team at OzMV. They've been a dream to work with for the last two vehicles. So we're here again, guys. I know it's in the showroom. I might have had a quick glimpse as I walked past before, but uh, let's go and check it out. I'm really excited to see what you guys think. Come with me and uh, let's go check it out. Back with Sean, mate, this is pretty much 12 months to the day that I was down here last time, picked up my white 2500. We've got another one, mate. What's going on? A little bit different, this one. 2500 Ram Tradesman. So, you know, the low spec, but I know you got some big plans for it. Yep. Still got the 6, 7 Cummins. Yep. And also we got the 8 foot bed on this one. So, there is a handful tops of these in the country. And I tell you what, I, I think this will be the first touring four wheel drive one in Australia. I fell in love with these over in America. Check it out guys, here it is. We got the single cab.
I literally fell in love with these things over in America. I've seen a couple build Sean and I just was frothing. So you guys managed to, uh, to get me in one. Mate, I'm excited for this one. I'm excited as well. Well, massive shout out to the team at AusMV once again for making it happen, guys. For all your American trucks, make sure you get down, come check them out. But uh, mate, I'm stoked, thanks heaps. Of course, no worries. Come, let's check it out. Obviously after traveling a full lap around America, I got to see a lot of different vehicles and a lot of different styles of touring setups. So this is a really good platform to me to change it up over the years. I've got a tray canopy solution in mind for this. I won't go into too much detail, but it will give me a point of difference from what I had on the 2500 in America to what we're gonna do here. But it also just gives me that platform over the years, if I want to build something different, I've got a really nice platform on the back here to do so. To kick it off, wheelbase. One of the things that we spoke about that I didn't love about the 2500 was being a lot longer. I think in the Australian conditions, the long wheelbase may struggle slightly, even though it's still had a better turning circle than the 79 series. But basically what you've got here is it's 300 mil shorter than your 2500 dual cab. It's the same length as your 1500 uh, rams. So, Good wheelbase length um, for maneuverability. The Rams, I believe, are about 100 mil narrower than the Fords and Chevys. So they're already a little bit narrower, obviously nothing like a 79, but they're not too dissimilar to your 300 series. So we didn't find width too much of a drama um, over on a lot of the American tracks. It's gonna be interesting to see how it really does perform in Australia. And that's the whole concept with this build, is can the Rams really cut it as a touring vehicle. We've gone the Tradesman, uh, the full bog stocker. I'll show you just how bog stock in a minute, but one thing I really wanted was a bare platform. So I don't need the really fancy interior. It is a touring vehicle. Let me show you the biggest difference between my last one and this one. The steering wheel <laughs> is on the right side of the vehicle. So we're off to an absolute flyer. I couldn't be more impressed with the interior on this thing, guys. Let me run you through the Tradesman. Now look, my Tradesman America was a completely different spec level. I'm not really sure what's happened here. It is a Tradesman, but it's finished a lot nicer. We've got a nicer vinyl finish, little bits of leather, all the dash is done in a nice leather vinyl as well. Leather center console. So this is a lot flasher interior than what I was expecting. But the biggest factor and why I went the Tradesman is I managed to get the transfer case stick on the floor, just like the old 79s, no electronic four wheel drive. The concept behind this thing, reliability, 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 and that is something that I wanna carry the whole way through this build. Nice steering wheel with controls. We are the uh, column shift guys. Really nice size head deck as well. 8.4 inch reverse camera. I'm a little bit blown away, to be honest. I didn't think it was gonna be this nice. Like out of the box, these things are crazy. This is the base. This is the cheapest model. As far as the interior goes, I'm stoked. I'm not gonna touch probably anything in here. I'm really trying to make this thing as simple as possible because we are gonna do some serious remote touring trips in this truck. And uh, I just wanna make sure that the whole build process from ground up, reliability, reliability, reliability. That's what I'm chasing with this build is reliability so we can get out into some of the most remote areas of Australia, put it through the paces, and then I can give you an honest feedback if an American truck can keep up in the Aussie harsh terrain. So this is where it's really gonna get interesting, guys. Um, rather than having the dual cab, where you've got the smaller, I think it's a six foot bed, we got the eight foot bed on the back. Obviously, all of this is gonna get thrown in the bin. I'm not gonna use any of it. It's already set up for a fifth wheeler as well, believe it or not. It's roughly about 2.6 meters long, the tray. So I'll be working with about that 2.6, 2.7, meter tray to finish flush on the tow ball. I can either go a monstrosity canopy and have a real nice open section on the back. I can run a canopy with tray space. So I've got a few ideas there. Gives me a lot of room for a few different things. So massive platform on the back and this is what's really gonna set this uh, touring build apart. I really wanted to know, can this compete with the Toyota platform? Your 79 platform, your 200 platform, you don't have to do the chop, they already come as a ute, the interior is already good, they're not as rough and tough as the 79, but can they keep up is the real question. So far from traveling America, I think they can, 
but the response on YouTube was, it's not Australian conditions. So guess what? We're here this year, full time, remote touring in Australia in the new Ram. Is this really the Land Cruiser killer that they spoke about when they first come out? There's bucket loads of them on the road right now, but let us know in the comments. I think it can be. Now there's uh, more access to parts and bits and pieces. That, that was one of the biggest bits of feedback we got. There's no parts from now. There's parts everywhere, guys. So can't wait to rip into this build. From here, we're not mucking around. Stay tuned. We're going straight down to uh, make another massive change. <coughs> Nothing better than new car day. So excited. I'm more excited in this one than I was the American one because I know this one's staying here and I'll be able to drive it whenever I want. Start button, start your engines. Oh, the big Cummings. All uh, right, this feels like home. First drive in the new Ram. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Every single month we're committed to giving back to you guys. Brown Davis, long range tank to suit your vehicle, plus five grand cash. Check out the new Get Tank shirt five grand and a tank. Good luck guys, final days. We told you we're on a deadline with this build and I was not joking. We've got about four weeks to get this thing fully ready for the Brisbane show, which is absolutely psycho. It was delayed about two and a half months with shipping on the water. So first stop, paint. Guys, we're on our way down to Ballina Smash Repairs. These guys did a paint job on the LN106 and it absolutely blew my mind it was so clean so we're taking the ram down there the white we're not keeping it white it's got to change it's gonna be explore colors but with a little bit of a twist i wanted to try and do something slightly different i actually i've seen it on one ram done it on a trx and i absolutely frothed it so we're going in we're going to see the boys have a quick yarn drop it off and you're gonna have to wait and see when I come back to pick it up what color it is. So let us know in the comments what color you think we're gonna go. Let's go say good day to the team down at Ballina Smash Repairs. Well, we're here guys, Ballina Smash Repairs. It honestly, it hasn't even been 24 hours since I picked the big girl up and it's coming straight in to get stripped and painted. Uh, so huge, huge shout out to Joel and the team of Ballina Smash Repairs for sneaking me in because I did tell them they were gonna have this for a month or so. And now I've told them they've got about a week and a half. So absolute legends. Considering the job they did on the LM106, like I was saying before, I know it's in safe hands. Best thing is brand new car. So it does make it a lot easier to paint. I was just chatting to Joel then. We're running through color schemes. Just pick them what we're gonna do, the grill, all the little infills. Uh, we're gonna do door handles. We're gonna black out some of the badging as well. We're gonna color code the door handles. We'll keep the mirrors black. So we're going for a bit of a two-tone theme here. Let me know what else you think we should throw at this. Let me know your thoughts. Did we do good? Did we stuff up buying another Ram? I wanna know your thoughts, guys. A shout out to all you legends for subscribing. If you haven't, smack that subscribe for us. Uh, hit the like button. If you want any merch, guys, it's online. You guys are the best. Till next time, get out and enjoy the Explore Life.